love both. I, uh, I fell in love with the inline reels uh, several years ago, and I like the line management that you get with inline reels. Um, there's some limitations that you get with inline reels that I don't like, where I'll prefer a spinning for certain situations. Um, but for small, real small jigs, tungsten jigs, um, shallow water situations, love inlines. Uh, spoons, horizontal presentations, some bigger, larger presentations for panfish, I, I definitely prefer a spinning reel. Not a big fan of the inline reels. Um, there are some designs that I've seen that look great conceptually. Uh, you get them out on the ice, line comes off the sides, you break them apart, uh, you see that the drag is nothing more than a piece of plastic that pressure screws into the side of the reel plate and just pushes harder against the side of the spool as it twists. Um, I've not been overly impressed with a lot of the, the designs. I haven't looked at all of them, but my experience thus far with inline reels is you get what you pay for, number one, but number two, there's a glut of them on the market that even though they have a straight line advantage and they don't promote as much line twist, um, they're just not as soundly made. It's just not a technology that's been as well developed and used over the years, so the drag systems aren't as good, they're not as smooth. They're just a little bit clunkier to operate. You know, I, I grew up with spinning reels, and, and the early additions of the inlines I didn't like because the gear ratios were so slow, and they just were a pain to fish with. Uh, let's be honest, they were a pain to fish with. But when you start watching fish respond to presentations delivered in, with both different reels, especially if you're using mono or fluorocarbon as a main line, you start to see that when you reel in, especially on the small uh, size 10 or smaller spinning reels, putting the line on the reel get, puts, puts line twist in there and that bait will get down there and it'll start spinning and it'll start spinning back. And I've watched especially bluegills. They'll come up, they'll back off, they'll come up and back off. And so line twist is an issue with spinning reels. Now, if you're fishing deep water crappie and you're using a braid that absorbs the line twist, I don't have a problem uh, with spinning reels. In fact, I prefer them. But in shallower water situations where You've got spooky fish, you want to eliminate anything that's affecting your, your success rate. The, the inline reels are by far the best option. You know, I'm still a spinning reel guy. No, not, you know, if I'm sight fishing in real clear water, you know, then I will go to an inline to keep it from spinning. But that little uh, motion that I talked about, that little boom, 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 that keeps your lure from spinning. You know, so as long as you keep that going, you can work that bait up and down. It's when you stop is when it starts to unwind. And you know, if you're not keeping it moving, then you end up with it spinning and you know the fish tend to shy away from it. Inlines I like to use for crappie fishing because you don't get the jig spin near as much. And I think sometimes, especially when you're trying to use plastics, that spin, you know, kind of hinders the number of bites that you get. So in those cases I like to use an inline. Um, but I use spinning reels pretty much for my walleye fishing. You're usually using a little bit heavier tackle, and in many cases you're using spoons and shivers and jigging wraps and things like that, uh, which are going to twist your line up and stuff anyway. So it, you know, you really don't, I don't think you gain a whole lot by going to an inline there. I love inline reels. Straight line is, that was my baby. I brought that out to the St. Paul Ice Show. Man, it's almost been 10 years ago. And had a lineup of people just to see this. No spin is huge. I've seen uh, inline reels like straight line for 35 years. I remember meeting some guys at Mille Lacs fishing walleyes with inline reels. And it wasn't just because they had them, you know, and they didn't want to buy another reel. There's no spin. And whether uh, people are using the old fashioned schoolies or even the pegs, the lures don't spin and they're moving them less. If you watch a true finesse pan fishing person, they want no spin the way they jig. Somebody that's not really in tune or not paying attention, they jig aggressive. If I have clients show up, they're gonna come in, they're gonna drop it down and start ripping it. And then when they realize nothing's gonna bite, then they'll slow it down. But straight line is so important in, in the world of panfish. Um, I, I think it, it's caught on for a reason. And you, you can use a spinning reel and catch fish. On those lakes, call me because I'd like to go there because those are the easy ones. Inline reels versus spinning reels. I really didn't, I never really jumped on the whole inline reel thing. Um, never at all. I, I spent 30, 40 bucks on them just because I wasn't sure. You know, we've always used, I've always used fly stuff 
for 25 years for my shallow water panfish stuff. Like that's been a kind of a mainstay, schoolie reels, things like that. We've always had them. Like they've, they've always had a place in the industry. What we've seen is all of a sudden inline reels are now 150 bucks and I think that's ridiculous. I really do, especially, um, and I'm, this isn't, I'm not trying to be mean, it's just really factual. Like when you fish every day and you look at a product and you go, okay, well, I know I'm gonna be in 30 feet of water. And when, when the fish are going, when you're in a bite window, it takes two to three times as long to get that lure down to the fish. You guys perch fish, you want it down, you want to pop that bale, you want that lure to rock it down, you want to jig it in their face, you want to stick another one as fast as possible. That's where I feel like that the super Achilles heel of the inline reels is in that, that fast fishing situation. So I guess I like inline reels, and always have for 25 years, in shallow fishing situations, less than 12 feet. Even 12 feet for me gets to be like, you click it and you're like, come on, like, let's move. Let's get this down there. Um, lure spin, I don't really think is a factor with them either. I mean, that's a big selling point. Like your lure doesn't spin well. When you reel up with an inline reel, I don't know that there's a lure that doesn't like corkscrew all the way up and put line twist in. So not, to, I don't want to sit there and blow holes in anything. I just think it's one of those things that looks good on paper. But if you actually took an underwater camera and watched it after fishing for a half a day, you'd come to a completely different conclusion on what you spent your money on. Ice fishermen work, they, you know, these people go to work every day. They come to our shows and they trust us to advise them on great products to buy. And if they can't trust us and like, you're pushing a guy to buy a $150 reel, and he's got two kids and you could have easily put him in and said, hey man, why don't you buy four spinning reels with a decent rod, it's the same price. Now they're not fighting over one reel that they all think is great and it's really not great, it's terrible. And now they got four combos and you got the whole family catching fish. I don't know, it just, it just makes a whole lot of sense to me. You know, I use both spinning reels and inline reels for panfish. I think on a good to average bite, I think you're gonna catch more fish with a spinning reel. Reason being is that you can get down and up quicker, okay? On a lot of bites, you catch 90% of your fish in a 10% window. The sun gets to a certain point in the trees, you've got five feet of crappies below you for a short amount of time, and it's just up, down, how fast can you do it, and then it's over, okay? And uh, sometimes with the schoolie reels, you know, um, or the inline reels, you know, it takes longer to get it up, takes longer to get back down. I think where, this, where that type of reel really shines is whenever you have a situation where you have a tough bite and you have to hold that rod pretty much still and not have any twist or turn in your lure. Now you're still going to develop twist in an inline reel too. It's just a line management where on a spinning reel I might get say three, four, five days of pretty hard fishing before I start having problems or my line's getting twisted up. Where if I'm not doing this and causing the jig to do this as soon as I stop, it's doing this. Okay? With a with an inline reel, instead of getting three to five days, I might get say six, seven, eight, nine days before I have the same problems. Because when you're jigging that lure and you have plastic on it especially and it's doing this, and then when you fight a bluegill and it's doing this all the way up to the, you're still getting twist in your line. So there's a lot of, there's some BS with this too. People say, oh, there's no twist. Well, yeah, there's twist. You just haven't fished enough this winter. You know what I mean? It just, it, it, it just takes longer to develop, but it's gonna get there. And so that's the thing is it's, it's these real spools, it's, think of it as line management. You know, as far as how, how long can you take care of that line so that you know your jig isn't all jacked up? Oh boy, that's a good question. You know, since I've seen, you know, I've, I, I guess I'd have to say I prefer an inline reel just because I like the whole mechanics of being able to use a fluorocarbon or a stiffer line and that inline reel just doesn't allow for as much twisting, right? Just the way the line comes off the reel. So if I had a preference, I would definitely prefer an inline reel. But let's say I'm, you know, doing certain styles of fishing. Um, I really feel a spinning reel works just fine. Um, so I've used both. And if I'm going finesse fishing, I really like, and I'm going ultra light, um, I really like that round reel style. 
Uh, if I'm going after more aggressive fish, perch and walleyes and stuff like that, I just feel like I can use a spinning rod, using a jig and wrap and something like that and get away with, it's just not as important, it's not as critical for me. So depending on what you're going after is kind of pick your rod, pick your reel, pick the application that you want to use, you know. So when I'm going after the big gills and big crappies, man, a lot of times I'm using the round reel and I really enjoy that. Um, for the fluorocarbon light tungsten jigs I'm using. Um, and again, we're going out to the Dakotas, using a little spoon, I'm using a little spinning rod, you know, with a spinning reel. So spinning, the reason I'm usually fishing panfish with the spinning reels is because oftentimes, you know, I mainly walleye fish, but oftentimes if I all of a sudden get into some good crappies or good, good perch or bluegills or whatever it is, the way I've got my rod set up is I've got like a nanofill coming, a, a no stretch line as the main line, but then I use a leader on the end of it. And the cool thing about that setup is if all of a sudden I get into some, you know, I'm fishing walleyes, I got an eight pound leader on, catch, all of a sudden I start catching perch and I realize I'll probably catch more perch if I could go down to a four or a two pound test line, I just switch out that leader. So for me, that spinning setup that I use for walleyes is a lot of times the same exact rod and everything that I might use for that perch just because I just kind of accidentally get on them. So that leader to me is just, you know, Put the expensive main line on there, the no stretch line, the nano, because it gets rid of ice real good. But that leader, I carry any, every year from 10 pound all the way up to 14 pound with me when I'm ice fishing. If I get in northerns, I'll put on some 14. If I get into panfish, I put on two or four. Walleyes, eight or 10. I can switch around real quickly, stay real versatile, I'll call it, and catch whatever's down there. The vast majority of what I use are inline reels, but I'm also spending the most of my time chasing panfish and small, medium-sized walleyes. That would be the, the best way to describe it. When I go on trophy trips, or I make a trek up to Manitoba or Canada somewhere where I know that there's trophy fish to be had, most of the time I'm on a spinning rod with a much larger rod. In fact, my, the, my rod length gets longer and I start using uh, larger spooled spinning reels. I had a couple out, I had a couple things happen with an inline where the line came off the spool and when it when it comes off the spool, it has a tendency to wrap back around it. All right, so now what you have to do is you got to get more line out until where it wrapped around, and then you got to come back up and put it up. I think the concept is good. I think the biggest mistake that people do is they put too much line on the inline because it has that tendency to come off. And especially when you're dropping the bait down and all of a sudden it stops and then the reel doesn't continue, but you get that loop in the line and then, then you got issues. And if you're in the wind, it's uh, categorically not a good deal. Spinning gives me a little bit more option because I'm used to spinning, especially with my summer business. I mean, I have, I have, I have a little both when it comes to inline and spinning. Um, I, I love the inlines for the no jig twist, what they were meant for, really. Um, the reliable thumb drag, it, you know, never fails unless it fails and then the you know the spinning reels my issue is like in deep water they're great but if you lay them down and slush them they're probably cooked for the day and and it's always slushy around the hole from drilling water out of it so it's it sticks to the reel it freezes you have a lot of bad like I've, I've broken off a lot of fish from line sticking this to, to a chunk of ice on the reel and all kinds of like right on the edge and, it, and, and so those reels get like put away these, the plastic schoolies, you can you know, like, <gasps> like flakes off, and there's nothing sticks to the plastic. It's so it's very reliable in that way. Um, the presentation value, I think, is huge. That, so I think I think what a lot of people miss is like the control of peeling line like this, and you can actually, you know, a lot of guys fish it down. You know, so they're they're slowing it down a little bit and bringing it down and watching their flasher for any signs of fish that want a slow fall. So the, that helps to like slow you down. And, and you can count, like one pull, two pulls, three pulls, I'm on bottom, you crank it down, you know you're at the ice is the bottom, and then you can just work from there. And you know when you get to your third pull, you can start working down into the school. Like it's brilliant for not having a flasher involved.